Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Folks, we got big news to talk about. But before we get into the news, I want to talk about the price of Bitcoin right now sitting at $60,348. I see some people are getting very fearful. And you know what? As an OG, as an experienced investor in crypto, that's a good sign because in a bull market, when people become fearful, that's very bullish, right? The market needs to get rid of all the leverage and wash out some people, pull back, build support levels, then bounce upwards. If we look at the daily chart, the RSI is bottoming out or close to bottoming out. We will find that bottom and then we will bounce, folks. It's just a matter of time. You just got to be patient and you can use these opportunities to buy the dip. Not financial advice, do your own research. I'm not personally buying Bitcoin. I'm buying all coins uh, because they are depreciating more than Bitcoin because Bitcoin's the rising tide that lifts all boats. So if Bitcoin's going down, typically you have alts are going to suffer a bit and bleed out. But that's good in a bull market. So I'm going to grab up some alts here and there, not putting too much in because I did the majority of my buying in the bear market when there was blood on the streets. So right now I am in profit for many altcoins, but of course we're looking for higher gains and higher returns on our investment. So be patient guys and here macro investor Raul Powell, who I've had on the podcast a couple of times, shared a great chart looking back over the past year because we had a big run up in 2023, of course, and that was the start of the bull market. And he highlighted where we had 20% plus corrections. And he said, this is the fourth 20% correction in Bitcoin in 12 months. Pretty ordinary stuff. So once again, if you've been around the block, my OGs, you know the deal. But for those of you who are new or still don't understand the market cycles, uh, I hope this data helps you. This is normal. Now, if we were in a downtrend in a bear market, obviously not a good sign. But we are in a uptrend in a bull market, a macro bull market, not just crypto, but also real estate stocks and so forth. And here, analyst Wrecked Capital shared an updated chart saying Bitcoin has dropped right into the range low area of its current reaccumulation range. In the three weeks after the 2016 halving, Bitcoin did the exact same thing, even producing a downside wick below the range low. Could history repeat? Now, there's no guarantee that history repeats, but there is a high probability it does. There is a probability that it doesn't, but there has been no indications like there's no like big black swan event or something that's, you know, uh, like what we saw in 2020. But even then, we saw even with a black swan event, the governments pump liquidity into the markets. And of course, we had a bull market, right? Everything ran up. So be patient, guys, and look for the buying opportunities. Well, folks, the big news of the day is that Hong Kong's Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs are officially live. Uh, this is historic, incredible, and I'm not expecting the Hong Kong ETFs to outdo the U.S. ETFs because the U.S. is the largest capital market in the world. We have BlackRock. I mean, come on, right? Uh, you, we got Fidelity and all of Wall Street. But guys, the bullish thing about this is on-ramps being built globally for capital to flow in from every fiat currency and investor, especially institutional investors, uh, many of the retirement accounts and investment accounts that can't touch crypto directly can do it through an ETF. And these on-ramps are going to bring a ton of capital, and you're putting that capital into a finite asset. I don't think I need to explain that further. Supply and demand economics here, right, folks? So historic, uh, the cryptocurrency ETFs were issued by three Chinese firms, China Asset Management, Bocera Asset Management, and Harvest Global Investments on the Hong Kong exchange. Now, let me play a really small clip here from CNBC, which was covering the announcement. They did. There was actually a big event and show that was put on here to uh, for the announcement. Uh, let me play the clip here. We're here at the live ceremony at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and the market is open. It is 9.30. We're just running a couple minutes behind, but you can see they are assembling in front of the gong. This is a big listing ceremony today, uh, the launch of crypto ETFs. It'll be the first time in Asia retail investors have a chance to trade crypto. 
cryptocurrency ETFs at spot prices. Now, this comes just three months after the U.S. launch of similar ETFs tr tracking spot Bitcoin. Uh, it has drawn billions in dollars of net inflows, also contributing to a surge in a Bitcoin price earlier this year. Year to date, it's about 50 percent. It has hit all time highs last month, over 73,000 U.S. dollars. Now, you can see that the, the Bitcoin ETFs, uh, there's about 14 ETFs that have hit the market today from three different issuers. Uh, those issuers are China Asset Management Company, Harvest Global Investments, and Hashkey Exchange. You can see the countdown has started. So as you can see, folks, they had a pretty decent ceremony here uh, celebrating in their own way, of course. So historic that Hong Kong is doing this. And of course, these are Bitcoin spot ETFs. And uh, James Seifert of Bloomberg uh, shared some interesting information saying the Hong Kong Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF launches didn't fully live up to their hype. In my opinion, we don't have assets data yet, but based on Bloomberg data, I see about $12.8 million in total volume for their first day. Uh, should add, as Eric Balchunas pointed out, this was a very successful launch for Hong Kong, just very different from what some on this site and elsewhere were calling slash hoping for. So as I said earlier, folks, I don't expect this to outdo the United States. That's not the point. The point is, on ramps, bridges being built for more capital to come in globally into this finite asset class. Now, James did add some additional context to that. He said, to be clear, by any reasonable relative measure for the launch of these ETFs, they were a massive success for the Hong Kong market. It's just that some were trying to look at what happened in the US and equate that in some way to the Hong Kong ETF market on an almost absolute basis. So he's right there. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is BitGo, which is one of the top tier custodians in the market, folks. BitGo is servicing many big clients in the industry, such as Pantera Capital, that's Dan Moorhead, Bitstamp, Bitcoin IRA. In fact, Nike uses BitGo's wallet service for their NFTs. BitGo has top tier security, insurance, and much more. Some of the services they provide include hot wallets, custodial wallets, self-managed cold wallets, and NFT wallets. And they're headed up by Mike Belsh who is an internet legend. The man was working in Web 1.0, 2.0. Now he's here in 3.0. He was actually at Google building Google Chrome and much more. So uh, you got that incredible tech pedigree. So BitGo, once again, one of the top custodians. If you'd like to learn more, visit the link in the description. Now, folks, something interesting that broke just yesterday evening uh, from Ripple one of the Bitcoin ETF issuers, which is Hash Group, and you'll see on their Twitter feed here or their X feed, they put out the photo of them celebrating the Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF launch. They're one of the issuers and they're working with Ripple. So here is what uh, Ripple tweeted out. We're excited to announce a partnership between Ripple, Hashkey Group, and SBI ushering in XRP ledger powered solutions, starting with supply chain finance to Japan's enterprise landscape. Big partnership. I think this is a big strategic move here for Ripple. And uh, they got the backing of SBI Group, which is the largest bank uh, group in uh, Japan. So this is very, very fascinating. Ripple CEO tweeted out Japan and a handshake emoji with the XRPL. So let me give you some additional context here. Ripple, the leading provider of enterprise blockchain and crypto solutions, has entered into a strategic partnership with Hashkey DX, the Tokyo-based specialized consulting company of the Hashkey group to introduce XRP Ledger powered enterprise solutions to the Japanese market. Hashkey Group has achieved significant success with its blockchain powered supply chain finance solutions, which have seen widespread adoption in mainland China. The solution was launched in July 2019 and currently has more than 4,000 companies registered, including 23 banks and 4,300 suppliers. The total trade amount recorded exceeds $7 billion USD with financing trying transactions nearing 3 billion USD within the solution. Leveraging this success, Hashkey DX will introduce the supply chain finance solutions to Japan through collaboration with Ripple and SBI Ripple Asia, a joint venture between SBI Holdings and Ripple. These solutions will be built on the XRP Ledger, a decentralized layer one blockchain renowned for its decade-long reliability and stability in tokenizing and exchanging crypto native and real-world assets. 
This is big for XRP and the XRP ledger, folks. So great news here. And um, looks like Hong Kong and Japan and the Asian markets are ramping up their efforts around crypto, clearly launching ETFs around Bitcoin and Ethereum, partnering with Ripple and doing much more. So big news here. Very exciting stuff. Now, final news item here, we got news that coal mining giant Alliance Resource reported a $7.3 million profit from Bitcoin mining. Folks, this is significant because if you have the energy uh, miners and the energy providers globally, you know, mining Bitcoin with the excess uh, uh, energy that they have, maybe blow off energy and so forth, that will be incredible because they're monetizing that energy, which would be wasted. And I think given that Bitcoin is becoming this valid asset class, the TradFi now, not, not to the crypto industry, of course, but to the TradFi folks and with the ETFs and BlackRock and all these folks involved, um, we could see more of the oil producers and much more coal mining and all that uh, start to use th this energy to mine. Uh, I think this is significant and very bullish for the future of Bitcoin. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. You know, I'm waiting for the big day when, when one of these oil producers comes out, Exxon or whoever it is, Chevron, and they, they're like, hey, yeah, we're mining Bitcoin. I think that would be incredibly bullish. All right, folks, thank you all for watching and listening. Friendly reminder, please grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto, The Crash of FTX and the Rise of Safer, Stronger Digital Assets. In fact, in, a, in about four hours or so, I have my book signing event. So I'm doing this uh, podcast early today because uh, I will be heading down to New York City near the Wall Street Bull and the financial district to do my book signing event. If you're in New York, come by, stop by, get a, a signed copy, come say hi, hang out, get some wine, some food and so forth. Um, thank you guys for watching and listening. Once again, grab a copy of the book. So really supports the podcast, guys, and leave a, uh, a rating and, and star rating, of course, five stars if you can. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later.